When last we left our adventurers, this is going to be the recap campaign diary of episode three of our campaign. The adventurers have just learned that the group that captured the unicorn is nearby and they all had headed over to scout them out and they got into position and they started attacking them. Actually, they didn't attack first. They ended up like trying to surround them when an arrow whizzed by Tink, uh, the human artificer. And in this battle, they actually ran into a lot of issues with it being dark outside. For some reason, I don't know why they didn't take the time to just uh, light some torches or anything but yeah i think it uh, overall was a good combat it took them about 50 minutes to complete the whole from start to finish they cast a sleep spell at the very beginning which incapacitated the majority of them except for the leader who was a lizard folk who was out scouting ahead and just hanging out on his own and while the other four or five of them were just bickering about who were entry-level members of the chain basically like trying to prove themselves while they had someone who was more connected oversee them to see like who was capable and who wasn't so they could like put them in different places and depending on his evaluation that was the whole point of them capturing this unicorn so the group incapacitated all but one of them and with the sleep spell and since it was dark outside they only had a campfire kind of off to the side so then Olivax ran in and started making attacks tink was trying to find where this lizard folk was the whole time but on the bugbear rogue went in and started making some attacks yeah they dealt with them pretty easily i felt like i role played the enemy is really well they were all discombobulated you know they're this is their first time together they're all really low level they're not experienced maybe except for one or two of them who were incapacitated again most of the fights they killed everyone except for one guy and the lizard folk who i had submits to them um since he's a lizard folk they're similar to dragonborns in my setting and dragonborns are like klingons where they're like they don't care if they die whereas lizard folks are similar however they're more self-preservation so if there is a way for them to survive they do not mind i had the lizard folk feel like since this is just a such a low level party that he's with like he doesn't feel obligated to protect them or like this is a great cause so that was my thinking behind that i had the lizard folk know some of the dragonborn scripture um, again which is very similar to klingons like i don't fear death or death is a companion well well had with many type of thing so that was fun for me to read off those lines and as far as what they learned they learned a few locations of like where the chain is located um, which isn't like surprising news but it's news to the players since they're not too familiar with the chain of Orokef this humongous organization in this country called the realm where they basically help run and train the city's armies after uh, the combat uh, there was some fun interactions between the unicorn and Waldo my brother who's playing the furball so that was fun they decided that it would be best after they had this encounter to split the party. Um, I was not for this in any capacity just because I don't think it's a good idea to split the party as well as what I had planned was I thought it was going to take them about a, another day to get back. So during that time, I was going to have a army of orcs called the Pike Horde attack this city and I was going to have them kill Ida, the halfling that they helped in the previous session just so I could build up some sort of hatred in them against this chain uh, since the Pike Horde is actually a brand of the chain they're just more rogue-ish uh, as they're they only answer to one person who's one of the lieutenants in the chain named jawbreaker govok so and they were headed back from one place to another and they were just raiding and pillaging on their way down and as well as there's some other political things that they've been involved with that the players are going to run into however them splitting the party kind of ruins that because then some of them will be in the city when this attack occurs so stay tuned for that next session as far as like how i maneuvered that but so they decided to split and the players that were going to go up were going to be Wink, the Eladrin Elf Wizard, Tink, the Human Artificer, and Thadon, the Bugbear Rogue, which are like the most chaotic out of the group. They're more like chaotic neutral, chaotic good, whereas everyone else is pretty lawful, I would say, for the most part. So they rode with all haste. They didn't take the unicorn as the unicorn was tired from being captured all day long and thirsty and needed to rest. So I had the unicorn tell the players telepathically like, hey, can you guys just escort me back basically again those three players rode hard up north
north and they got back to the city the next morning around midday. I said 11 a.m. And the guards, uh, they returned two of the horses and then the guards asked about a halfling that they had captured, uh, the other one that was spared, and they escorted the group to Droll, who met with them and got a report back on what they had done. And they also heard bad news that Droll had talked to Alloy Barnes. They came very upset talking to him and he did not appreciate them taking his newly trust in them, giving them a chance to work with him as a favor to Enzo's parents. And then they go and forge a letter in his name and give it to a place that he has had a lot of friction with because of his relationship with one of the Alloy Barnes sons, which I made up on the spot. I didn't really have anything planned as for like why he took away 100 gold pieces. So I just made that up on the spot like, oh, he's in a relationship with one of the sons at Alloy Barnes and they're a thing and uh, the parents are really sketched out from Droll since he's not a native and he has a lot of power and they question like his motives and if he'll be as good as the previous wizard who was there which I also made up on the spot. I didn't have anything planned as to like who Droll's backstory was. I just had his motivations and goals written down. So I had it that the previous wizard had died in battle and that Droll has taken his post in the last three years and he is still maneuvering the political landscape and trying to find out who his true friends and foes are, who to deal and not deal with. So I feel like the players knew it was coming in a way, uh, but at the same time I did not expect them to react the way they did. Fadon, the bugbear, uh, really talked most of the time which I found strange and then I had the wizard cast a silent spell on him so I could give the other players a chance to speak and they all expressed their frustrations towards Droll, who was just trying to say, hey, like, I have to do this because, like, I have things I have to keep uh, my name and I'm not going to uh, sully you guys. I would rather just repair what I you guys have done to me, which they didn't see. So how it ended was Fadon basically has made, like, an arch enemy out of Droll, which I thought was very strange. And he is just going to work on taking him down uh, by himself, which, again, I also found was very strange. It didn't seem like the other party members reacted in that same way, so I don't know why he went so drastic. But hey, if that's what he wants to do, that's totally fine with me. So uh, we went back to the other group just at the very end of the session, saying hey, you guys are traveling north, and hey, other people that are staying, which they decided to sleep in Joel's Tower as he offered it as like an olive branch to them. So they heard the attack noises coming from outside, and that's where we ended the session. I'm very nervous as to how I'm going to handle this next part, since the party is going to be split, and the three of them will be there for the attack while the other ones will not. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, I thought the combat went well and I thought that the reactions of uh, my NPCs was correct. I don't know how I could have made it any better other than Droll's punishment just not being as harsh or him being persuaded easily. I didn't think that was fair because I wanted Droll to be like a relationship that's actually earned and I didn't want him to be taken advantage of as he is highly intelligent, which I also don't think that the players really understood. But yeah, I think that the overall the campaign is very fun. I feel like all my players are having fun. I am starting to loosen up a bit as far as like how much to prep and what not to prep. So yeah, I stay tuned for the next one um, and we'll see how the group handles the attack on Alloy.